the Dim Dim Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Hello, and welcome to the Dim Dim Podcast. I am your host, Becca, a.k.a. The Syrian Indian. This is your safe space to talk about frustrations, misconceptions, perceptions, and assumptions in the African communities amongst us in the diasporans and our relatives and friends back home. First, I want to start by thanking you all for all of the likes, the comments, and all of those that have made time to subscribe. If you haven't done so, this is the time. And to all those that, that have made time to join us for the premieres, thank you. Today, we're talking about another big assumption in the African community. Mental illness or mental health in general is not for black people. Because how dare you? If you say you have anything of that sort, you're either weak or you're cursed. Now, to have that conversation with me today, I have two beautiful aunties from Tanzania and from Sierra Leone. On my near right, I have Auntie Matilda. And on the far right, I have Auntie Mary. Thank you both for coming on board here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Patricia. You're welcome. So, the big question of the day. Mental health is a taboo in the African community because if you, if you say you have any stresses at all or any concerns in that area, you're either weak or you've been cursed. Is that a misconception or a reality? Over to you, Auntie Matilda. I, I would like to t take a look at it as a form of like maybe um, it's, it is a misconception, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, when we uh, look into the definition of uh, mental health, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that can cause um, mental health crisis for individual. And w each person is different, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we say as, um, I'm going to speak as an African lady, right? Mm -hmm. That um, I am a strong woman. I do not have any mental health crisis. I do not deal with mental illness. Mm -hmm. That is a misconception because for me, on my day-to-day -day life, I do have times when I've had a crisis moment where I have to just sit back and find a way of um, um, just deal with deal with that mm -hmm. with that crisis. Mm -hmm. Whether if it has to be calling a friend or seek help, mm -hmm. professional help, whatever that may look like. I have to um, deal with that. But I think it's mostly for me to be able to come from a place where I can recognize that this is an issue mm -hmm. that, I have to, that I have to address other than just ignore. So, of course, going back to your question, I would say as an African, we do um, experience mm -hmm. mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And we should um, address that because that would help in, in the long run well-being as a whole when you're talking about... Uh, holistic well-being. It's not only about the physical, how I look. If I look good, I dress good, My physically I'm strong, but inwards I'm kind of like scrambling. Mm -hmm. That is an issue that Absolutely. I have to address. So yes, it, it is a misconception. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You took sides. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Usually we go back and forth and we're like, ah, no, we're in the middle. Do you want to add anything to that? I do. I think uh, there is uh, a lot of information right now. I mean, I'm, I'm going to speak on a place of hope. Kay. I know that we have our issue in the African community about mental health and how we perceive it. Mm -hmm. But I think right now, uh, we're kind of global community. Okay. You know, Africa, we're not so isolated as once we were before. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, information right now, it reach everybody everywhere. Mm -hmm. like information is instant is accessible. If you want to learn about mental health and, and be aware, you can have that information. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, there's a lot of our, um, progress has been made, mm -hmm. and especially in our part of the world. They, we have um, uh, organizations such as WHO, I think you, you, you um, uh, mentioned before in your, in your written question. Yeah. Uh, they, they, there's such a focus in Africa right now mm -hmm. about mental health. And um, uh, I think sometimes it's about what priority 
do we make mm. that as an issue for mm -hmm. us in our community, in our country back home, even just in your in your home? Mm -hmm. Like, is a mental health an issue for you? And how much are we willing to invest Priority. in that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the misconception of mental health, if one wants to find information about what is mental health, what is not mental health, mm -hmm. there's so much information. We have made so much advancement mm -hmm. in information and it's accessible for everyone to consume. So that's what I I'll say about that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then you are also living <coughs> on the side of this being a misconception, but you're not I really... I think the, the information uh -huh. is there to dispel mm -hmm. uh -huh. those misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that is ongoing. And okay. I think uh, mental health is, uh, in this part of the world, mm -hmm. I, it has been made a such a priority. Um, and I think we need to do the same back oh, home. Back home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there is, um, if you want to know, any, whether you're talking about a government or even in your own home, mm -hmm. if you want to know how much priority you put in certain issue, mm -hmm. is how much you're willing to invest in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like uh, back home, even the WHO came out with the information that we're not in putting enough finance in advancing okay. mental health issue in our, in our part of the world. Mm -hmm. But in this country, mm -hmm. it's a priority and you can see by how much resource that we have in the community mm -hmm. and how much information and how much we're, we're working, I mean, to dispel those, uh, those myths. Mm -hmm. It's not so much about uh, in African community, it's also in a mainstream community too. Mm -hmm. We have had those myths and stigma mm -hmm. mental health here in, 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 in this country as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I can say, um, coming from, as a mental health therapist mm -hmm. myself and mm -hmm. be even being like in the social work field, I don't know if I can count up to five black clients that I have had to work with. Yeah. It's like the resources are there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I don't know if we are willing to access it. But so sometimes it's not so much about willingness. Sometimes it's about creating resources that fit mm -hmm. our need. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Because we have a very Beautiful. unique need. Beautiful. We have a very different way how we, ch we reach out to resources. Mm -hmm. We have a very really different way how we seek support. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think uh, from what we have done before, again, mm -hmm. there are some advancement that has been made mm -hmm. to recognize that in our community as an African, mm -hmm. we have a different way to reach out. We, reach out, we yeah. have a different way to kind of uh, engage in support. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much that we don't go, it's mm -hmm. are you making the resource more accessible to us mm -hmm. based on our needs, mm -hmm. right? And if I could touch on this a little bit mm -hmm. when we're talking, well, t in terms of going back to that um, Africans with the issue of um, the we don't have or don't experience mm -hmm. um, mental health. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, there is a, a lot different um, ways that mental health can can um, present itself. So maybe for individual, ha for, for, for individual right? Mm -hmm. So um, defining what what is mental health mm -hmm. and what are the different types of mental illnesses, mm -hmm. and then when you're able to identify that, then you know, oh, okay, I can put a name to what I am feeling because sometimes I might be going through stuff, but if I don't know what it's like, what what what, what is this feeling? that I am feeling, it then how can, I it, 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 yes, yeah. how can I seek help? Because mm -hmm. I don't really know what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. But what I'm feeling is this, I can tell that this is anxiety mm -hmm. or depression. Mm -hmm. Then I can seek help for anxiety and depression. So when I don't know what anxiety and depression look like for me, feel then like, yeah. or feel like, mm -hmm. then maybe... Mm -hmm. I don't experience mental health because that's not what it is. You know, when you go, example, back home, every time you greet somebody, they're always, I'm fine, I'm okay. Howdy, buddy. Uh, howdy, buddy. <laughs> like, buddy fine. Uh, buddy fine, <laughs> buddy okay. But really, we are going through a lot of stuff. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm having a, a anxiety mm -hmm. that, is, that is severe. This is a form of a, a, a mental, like, a, a PTSD, mm. right? PTSD, I would say, uh, it, it's something that's, a lot of people who have ex who have um, experienced or have been in situation of war mm -hmm. and can experience PTSD, I but they it. don't. People do sometimes don't e e even know what PTSD look looks like, like or, feels or flashback. Like. Mm -hmm. I remember, mm -hmm. for example, when I left Sierra Leone, I was in the Gambia mm -hmm. with my with my very good friend. Mm -hmm. We were in this area where uh, it, it was uh, um, an army um, barracks, barracks, right? Mm -hmm. But it was in the Gambia. I'm no longer in Sierra Leone, and then. 
in that path where we're walking, it, it has um, the, uh, trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were right halfway in the middle, mm -hmm. and then there were two um, military guys. They were mm -hmm. going about doing their own business. Mm -hmm. But uh, I froze. Because there was a, a moment of flashback for me. Because for me, even though I'm no longer in Sierra Leone, I'm in a place where I feel that it's peace. Safe. I'm mm -hmm. relatively safe. Mm -hmm. But now I'm experiencing flashback. Mm -hmm. As if I was back there. It mm -hmm. took me a while to be able to feel like, okay, no. I'm no longer in war zone. Mm -hmm. I'm in a safe place. So that's what's th that was part of that for me. And even after coming to Canada, mm -hmm. sometimes you feel like after you've, if you've been to um, experience, you've lived through war, you're going to you're experiencing things like PTSD, you're in Canada, you keep having recurrent dreams mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of being in the war. That is another issue, right? That is so you have to be, if, if you've, you have not been able to process that, mm -hmm. you don't know what that looks like. It can feel very overwhelming where clients feel like, oh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I'm losing my mind. But when you're able, you've been in a place where you're able to process that, you wake up from those um, nightmares, from those nice sweats. You find a way to ground yourself and remember that you're no longer there. You feel safe. I'm in mean, Canada. You, you look at some of the, the ways, the tools that you've had within you mm -hmm. to um, deal with those um, stresses, those um, PTSD um, mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, flashback of PTSD. And you were able to deal with that so I can remind myself, oh, no, I'm no longer there. This is, I'm just having a dream. And sometimes Absolutely. that's what clients deal with when other clients that have been dealing with mm -hmm. things like PTSD, whether it has to do with... Um, other areas of the life because PTSD, which is a form of a mental health crisis, mm -hmm. can stem from different, different things in their life. It can be losing a, a, a close family mm -hmm. member. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, too. You mm -hmm. can have a, a close family member who, um, for some reason, just dropped dead or something. You yeah. lost that. It wasn't planned. Mm -hmm. And that is a crisis on its own, right? Mm -hmm. That can cause some form of trauma for the individual or maybe right. war or maybe earthquake. There's so many things that can cause trauma for the individual. Mm -hmm. And now you feel like you're having all this... Um, what the word again? How do we call that at work when your uh, a client is going through crisis from an event that happened trigger? from a trauma? Yes. So now they're having all this trigger and they don't know put a name to what they're feeling, right? And sometimes you don't even know like the whole because the PTSD mm -hmm. for those who don't know is the post-traumatic Traumatic stress, stress disorder, disorder. <laughs> and and you have to be diagnosed with that before you can claim it because people <laughs> walk around saying I, I have, have PTSD, PTSD. <laughs> I have PTSD. <laughs> you yeah. can experience the symptoms mm -hmm. and then you go and get mm -hmm. a diagnosis mm -hmm. of some sort. But I really love that area that you both touched on about how. Sometimes it shows up different. It shows up differently, yeah, like for in different, different ways. people, yeah. Because I grew up around that, um, like in an area where somebody literally has to run mad in the street mm -hmm. for them to be recognized as this person has a mental health crisis, yes. right? Yes. Because we don't recognize the symptoms early enough mm -hmm. to do something about mm -hmm. it. And I think that's still happening for yes. people who are not able to recognize and acknowledge and mm -hmm. know how to name it. Sometimes you don't even have to recognize. It just shows up. It shows it up. It shows up by itself. If you're having a, a hard time navigating relationships, mm -hmm. if you have a hard time uh, maybe uh, in a workplace, mm -hmm. if you have a hard time in your personal life. Uh, Which we all do. Mental, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. At yeah. some point. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Whether you recognize it or you have an instant awareness, mm -hmm. it's just show up. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when you are uh, kind of feeling stuck, right, you just cannot move forward. Mm -hmm. Things happening. Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe that's uh, a, a time to seek out uh, uh, for support help. for help, mm -hmm. and uh, and that support can help you to uh, kind of uh, identify what's going on mm -hmm. and uh, and then give you an insight. This mm -hmm. is where you are, and mm -hmm. this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. and be able to connect to mm -hmm. make a connection between what's happening now mm -hmm. is because what happened then when yeah. you're talking about the trauma yeah. and the war mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that and a, a lot of a lot of um, uh, uh, a lot of time when a, a newcomer comes in uh, I mean not only you have to kind of adjust to the system to yes. this new world but you have these other things mm -hmm. that you brought up from back home mm -hmm. that you still kind of Carry, and yeah. that could create a barrier for you yeah. in mm -hmm. order to mm -hmm. I mean, properly settle, right? Absolutely. Uh, again, that feeling of stuck. Yeah. And uh, um, as I say, I think for me, education and information, and, and I think what you're doing is a beautiful thing here. Thank you. Awareness, education, information mm -hmm. is, is important. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. people can maybe 
uh, as we speak, people can see themselves in those kind of a situation yeah. and then, of do course, something about do it. something about it by seeking seeking support and help. Wonderful. Earlier, like, just want to go back. Mm. Like, you mentioned earlier uh, in the segment that um, back home we've used to seeing, like, the extreme end of mental illness, right? Which is and what people run away from. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and I think probably that's what causes the stigmatization because when you see the extreme, uh, I, I don't know about Tanzania, but in Sierra Leone, it's when, I, when somebody, um, mental illness looks like they will use the word crazy, of course, mm -hmm. and this is somebody that's run wild in the streets. Of course, there is no support. There is no family. They are on their own. They are no virtually insight, yeah. uh, homeless, no help. Mm -hmm. And then in, in rags. So, so that's what mental health looks like, mm -hmm. because that is the extreme. So sometimes maybe that's what um, feeds the... The issue of we don't experience because that is what I, this is what I see. Mm -hmm. I when I see the extreme mm -hmm. and I'm my feeling does not look like that, that I don't really experience it. Mm -hmm. Whereas I am in some ways, even though it's not extreme, but I do have a little bit of that in me. Like what I, it doesn't have to be um, the, uh, the extreme, that but extreme. I do struggle with maybe with depression or anxiety or other things that you might struggle with, right? A and, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what we're going to talk about mm -hmm. next. If you're just joining us, mm -hmm. this is. The Dim Din Podcast, your safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations in the African community. Today, we're touching on mental health in the African community. Thanks for joining. So going back to that aspect, because I want us to narrow it down mm -hmm. for people who believe that um, mental health has to be as extreme and... Um, you talked about, you touched on that piece of when we're going through stresses in our personal lives or like at work, in relationships, they can sort of like induce the symptoms in us that uh -huh. we don't tend to recognize, uh -huh. but that can like progress to something else because mm -hmm. sometimes it does not give you a warning. Hey, I'm coming now. Yeah. It just, sh just shows, like up. shows up for you, right? So for people who are thinking that mental illness has to be as extreme as running the street mad mm -hmm. or being diagnosed with bipolar, with like borderline, with mm -hmm. schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. What do we have to say? Like what are the, some of the symptoms that some people have to look out for? Like the everyday people like okay. you and I. What do we have to look for to sort of like get a sense that we probably should be reaching out for help to either support system or a professional help? I, I think, uh, I mean, maybe you can jump in uh, at any time. Like, I, I think like uh, in that case, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, just talking about the everyday um, person, right? Mm -hmm. if, when you are in a situation where you feel overwhelmed, Completely. Extremely overwhelmed that you cannot, m you're not, uh, unable to manage your day-to-day -day activities, mm -hmm. that is when you seek for help. Because some little things become extreme mm -hmm. in your uh, yeah so that's when you're able to if you if you feel like you're dealing with something that this is situation maybe um let's say uh, 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 anxiety right mm -hmm. something if you're not able to uh, let's say you you, you suffer from anxiety mm -hmm. there's a lot of other mental but i want to say let's say anxiety is a it's a it's a it's, a, it's, a, it's like in a milder way right mm -hmm. so uh, we're just going through uh, uh, anxiety right if you're not able to manage that mm -hmm. it can um blown into something bigger Right. Absolutely. So if let's say I'm going through a crisis right now and it's bring, giving me a moment of anxious. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not able to um, manage it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what happened in that situation, you begin to overthink. You oh, overthink it's everything. And your you heart to is beating you, faster. Your heart is usual. beating faster. Your palms are sweaty. <laughs> you're overthinking. All of a sudden, your you're hands are shaking. You feel like you're gonna like faint, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you're not able to manage and bring that down, that that is that that can that that that, that is what it can look like from our um, everyday person, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So be able to, because uh, I've had clients feel like this is this is what happened to me, and I feel like I'm losing my mind. Absolutely. I feel like I'm going crazy. Absolutely. And it's uh, at, at that point, like, okay, what, 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 what is it that, what, that is happening? Mm -hmm. And able to break that down for the client and make them feel like 
you're not really going to cr going crazy right now. You're just overwhelmed with a lot of stuff right now. That's and how can we manage this so that it doesn't become a place where it's it's un 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 unmanageable? Like it progresses. Yes, to something that it progresses into something to something more else. More serious. Because yes. it will if you don't uh, exactly. do something it's, about it. It will if you don't. It look will. At, uh, uh, like the yeah. body takes over and say, uh, okay, uh, you're yeah. not doing anything. And now I'm gonna do it for now you. Now I'm gonna do uh, it for uh, you. Yeah. Now you have to rest. Now you have to rest. Yeah. And also when it comes to depression too, sometimes you look at depression. Depression, you feel like also when you feel like um, I have no interest. Extreme in sadness. I see extreme sadness. Just numbness. And numb. And you have no interest in doing the things that you want you used like, to enjoy. You enjoy doing. Yeah. And you just want to be in bed all day. Uh, you're not motivated to do, mo to, to, to do anything. Mm -hmm. That's what it might look like. Mm -hmm. And for s that's sometimes when you have to, um, I know sometimes people say, oh, you can just get over it. Like, no. And again, when Mary said earlier, that's when we have to seek help and get help. Because no matter what the diagnosis, Mm -hmm. There is help and you can manage it. Whether if it's schizophrenia, bipolar, anxiety, depression, if you're able to um, um, seek help, and whether it's come daily, um, medically, mm -hmm. seek the help, um, be, uh, if you need to get medication for that, uh, it can be, you, you, can, you can live a meaningful life. It Absolutely. is managed, you can manage it. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Over to you if. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think for me is when um, whatever that you're going through, mm -hmm. it interferes mm -hmm. with your life. Mm -hmm. right? It interferes in a sense that it you feel out of control a little yes, bit. Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, a stress is inevitable. Absolutely, it's a part of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have stress, and uh, we all have a way of cope. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes we have those that kind of inner strengths where you have something happening, you, you work it through yourself, you process it, you resolve it and move on. Mm -hmm. But you're n if you're not able to do that, mm -hmm. when you encounter something where uh, it's kind of a, as I said before, interfere w w with your everyday life, mm -hmm. and then maybe that's kind of a cue for you to seek out something different. Mm -hmm. um, I mean... I, I for, my, for my personal life, like I built in um, a way of coping with daily stressor. Mm -hmm. And I think if you, are, if you have insight mm -hmm. and awareness where you are in your life and what makes you function mm -hmm. in a healthier way mm -hmm. and what makes you function and you feel unhealthy, then you can recognize that and identify that and move on. But it, uh, it's, kinda, it's a daily thing that you do just kind of to navigate it and, and, and cope with the day-to-day -day things. Mm -hmm. But when you can no longer do that mm -hmm. anymore, then that's yes, when you, yeah. ma maybe it's time that I reach out for, 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 and the reach out part, it doesn't have to be the clinical sense of reaching out. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. have to go through a therapist or psychologist or, I mean, if that is a requirement, yes, you do that. Mm -hmm. But reach out could be something very simple, like reach mm -hmm. out to a friend, mm -hmm. reach out to a group of, uh, uh, um, I mean, as a community, we all have a, a support system mm -hmm. built in within us. I mm -hmm. uh, reach out to those kind of uh, support. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is you can't do it all alone. You cannot. No man no. is an island. No, mm -hmm. you can't no do man it all is an alone. island. You can't go through life. By 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 yourself. <laughs> I mean, as strong as we think we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, for I mean, uh, uh, for all of us to uh, check out uh, uh, check up on your sisters. You yeah. Know? Uh, and and especially um, the you know the 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 silent one. The one the that one doesn't <laughs> say much. <laughs> doesn't say much. The one who is maybe isolated a little bit. The one that looks like, you know, you know, they just got all their stuff together and they're doing good. And, and, and the know, one that takes care of everybody. I know, I was just going to say <laughs> that too. The <laughs> one that takes care of everybody. Usually <laughs> when yeah. they go quiet. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think we're so kind of, as a woman, sometimes we're mm. so kind of built in to mm. look after other people. Mm. And uh, we're kind of really neglectful of looking after, after ourselves. ourselves. Yeah. And, uh, and, and sometimes you don't have the luxury to look after yourself because you got uh, so much to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's maybe that's when you need your friend and then check in, hey, how yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Are you okay? Absolutely. So uh, the reaching out could be just that, very simple, basic. And of course, yeah, and if they need to reach out to 
the professional help, by all means, you do that. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good point. To those in the diaspora, especially those in my part of the diaspora, um, Canada and Alberta to be specific, there are a lot of resources. Something that I have heard um, a lot is that first, if you don't have money, you cannot seek um, professional help for a mental health. That's not true. As long as you have the health card, it is free. AHS has free services for all of us. You can seek it at any time. And, and another thing that most people talk about is that it's not confidential. If I go and tell someone my problem, they would share it with somebody else and the whole community will know about what's happening with me. If it's a professional, they are required, again, a code of ethic. they are required mm -hmm. to keep whatever you say confidential. And we went to school for far too long <laughs> to like <And> <laughs> make all of that yeah. go away, right? <laughs> so and please. And, and also mm. I want to touch to, I mean, I mean, there's such a, when we used to work mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. there's such a, a focus on identifying that we do need a different kind of support. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As, as a people. I mean, it has to, uh, even with a, when we talk about definition of a mental health, sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's culture, right? Yeah. Absolutely. As, uh, That's culture, part of it. Culture has a big impact on how we define, identify what mental health is. Mm -hmm. And to be able to meet people, clients, where they are, in their cultural definition mm -hmm. and be able to work with and that. And provide, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. provide uh, um, a services that uh, kind of fit in that. Uh, I know what we did, the, uh, the community, they are, they are working toward identifying those things mm -hmm. and creating services mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are unique mm -hmm. to what we need mm -hmm. as an African community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did that kind of work on, uh, with Matilda before, and um, there are some cultural sensitive mental health support. Yes. That's it's available. And, there are, and, and for myself personally, mm -hmm. I know individual therapists mm. who are specialized in the cultural uh, um, uh, approach to mental yeah. health and support. Yeah. And uh, just to speak to that too, sometimes we've had um, uh, organizations say that it's hard for um, ethnocultural communities to access their services, mm -hmm. right? They don't come. Some have, have said that, okay. But in the case where, okay, if they don't know exactly uh, what's going on for us or how mm -hmm. they can provide services to feed our needs, needs, how can they do that too, right? Mm -hmm. So to be able to say, okay, uh, maybe if you're having this issue, um, connect with a, me with a uh, mental health facility in your area mm -hmm. and let them know exactly in my culture this is usually what we do or this is what helps me and see how best because therapy is not for everyone right how best they can work with you on that even if your 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 the issue is uh, i'm afraid about uh, confidentiality mm -hmm. this is why sometimes i don't want to access because maybe as a therapist you might know somebody else in my community how do i trust that mm -hmm. what i tell you is not going to go out there right mm -hmm. that's another issue too and also when we talk earlier about creating a, a sister group whether mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't even have to be a sister, a brother group, whatever works for you as mm -hmm. an individual in terms of dealing with your getting that support system in place. Have somebody that you trust mm -hmm. that when I talk to this person about my issue, mm -hmm. I know that they have my best interest at heart and my whatever I tell them stays with me. I think that's stays sometimes what is the, issue, is the issue why it's hard for us to come out and speak, right? Because it does because happen, though. Yeah, you because you're share afraid. And sometimes you hear and, and it it's from out somebody there. else. And you don't want that. Because who wa like, I, I wouldn't want that for myself, too, right? No. So, but I've been able to create a group, a, 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 a space where, this is Mary. I met Mary uh, through work in 2006. We've been friends forever, right? Mm -hmm. When I am going through crisis, mm -hmm. I trust Mary. I can call her right away. And I've done that in the past where I'm going through crisis right now. This is like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I cannot deal with this. <laughs> I, need, I need to talk. And I'm I like, need my sister. <laughs> Can I come? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she would be like, when I call her, it's just not us having wine talking like, no, I am dealing with the question and I need to talk. Can I come? When, what, when are you off work? She was like, right away, come, we'll throw everything out and then we'll talk. Because I know that whatever I tell her stays within her and she also helped me navigate what I am dealing with. So by the end of the day, oh, I feel much better now. Exactly. Now I, I feel like this is what I'm going to do that is going to help me 
deal with whatever situation is causing me crisis. So when it shows up, you deal with it. You mm -hmm. don't try to go around mm -hmm. it. You don't try to put it in the back burner temporarily. Mm -hmm. No, because it's you just going to deal with yeah. it by reaching out to a sister. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that. We're going to try not to leave the men out because mm -hmm. I know that they'll come for me <laughs> and say, Patricia, mm -hmm. you were only focused on the women. Do mm -hmm. men not experience mental health crisis? You do. And I think that's a big piece yes. because our men a have again, been... Again, that speaks to the, uh, the strong, the macho man. That's right, the piece, right? Yes. And men don't cry, right? Yeah. Like how and and that's cry. a misconception so, too. Right. Which we will talk about in Maybe a different in episode. A different episode. <laughs> okay, focus more on the men. <laughs> but <laughs> but there's that piece mm -hmm. of like where they really experience that. And most of our men, they have so so many responsibilities mm -hmm. to also like tackle, like yeah. you are the provider, you have to be present for it's your family. family there's that cultural aspect of things yeah. where you're expected to be present in the community and all. And when you're experiencing all of these challenges, it's really it hard for you to come out and talk about it. Because yes, women or black women are supposed to be strong and resilient, but I think there's also like a heavier burden placed on men. Mm -hmm. So what we are all saying then is that all of the things that we've talked about is not necessarily just for the women, no, but no. we're talking to our African brothers and sisters As, yeah. in the diaspora and in the different parts of Africa in general. Yeah. And I hear you talk a lot about like the resources that are available here, but we all know that in some parts of um, Africa, it's, it's, it's not being normalized as much to seek out these resources. Mm -hmm. However, it does not mean that there's not, there are no supports mm -hmm. that are available. Because yeah. back in my country, I see in different colors, like every time you go there, there's music playing, you know, people are mm -hmm, dancing mm -hmm. and playing. There's a lot of community. So they may not necessarily talk about their stressors or like talk about all these things that are going on one on one because mm -hmm. they may not know that necessarily, mm -hmm. but they're doing other things to sort of like keep them afloat. Self care, right? Self -care. Let's go on. Let's talk about a little bit of self care, right? Because okay. even when we talk about um, with, with the men too, right? Mm -hmm. with, the, with the men, you have the breadwinner, you have the job, you have the family back home. There's a lot of things that you're dealing with. So mm -hmm. this, let's say, for everybody as a whole, mm -hmm. man, woman, this is for us. Mm -hmm. Find a way to create balance. Mm. for yourself that things does not Bring become it right overwhelming <laughs> right <laughs> Full circle. find a way to create balance for yourself that it doesn't become overwhelming if you feel like oh i have my job i have my family i have this year and i've been doing this 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 take five minutes ten minutes sometime in your day just to feel relaxed if you need to go out and just find you as an individual do that sometimes when i get busy busy i shut everything out this is my time don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to have a quiet time. Kids, and now. that's okay. And it's okay. It does not I'm make not you being a bad selfish. Person. No. Wonderful. And, and uh, uh, so find the time to create balance mm -hmm. and take care of you. What's what? Whatever way it feels like. You feel like you want to dance. You want to listen to music. You want to have yoga. You want to go for a walk. And sometimes we talk about in therapy journaling, right? Mm -hmm. Journal those thoughts out. Write them down. Just write. And sometimes that can help you. Some we offer client maybe taking a bath. Do something. Figure yeah, out shopping. exactly. Yeah. Shopping. <laughs> shopping. Some people Shop do shopping. Therapy, right? I'm with you. Exactly. Take me with you. <laughs> and so figure out something that works for you. I want to go back. Let's say when you talk about back home or in places where you feel like they don't have the facilities like we do have here mm -hmm. to um, deal with mental health issues. I have had clients here at my previous work where. Um, spirituality is, is, is what keeps them grounded. So if you're in a place where I feel like I don't have the, I don't have a therapist to go to, I don't have that kind of facility here, maybe for you it is your spirituality mm -hmm. that helps you. And Absolutely. even here, when you talk about um, uh, services that is catered towards um, cultures, mm -hmm. we look about the indigenous communities, right? Mm -hmm. Co um, spirituality for them is, is they focus a lot on that. You have the kukums, you have the elders, you have the they do the round dances. They have cultural things that helps create a balance that, 
that's and grounding. Uh, a sense of um, bring a sense of well-being. Peace. So yeah. whether if you are in Africa or someplace where you, maybe find something within your own spirituality mm -hmm. or or something else, whatever it is, figure out something for yourselves that makes you feel better. Wonderful. That makes you just for uh, I like to um, take home for the day for me that I can say is mm -hmm. a situation where you can build up. Um, uh, uh, like uh, if I'm going through crisis, mm -hmm. what am I gonna do? Like a crisis, like a crisis uh, management, a plan, a something, tool. a tool, uh. right? <laughs> that you can use. Maybe I have a trusted friend mm -hmm. that I can call talk mm -hmm. and talk to. Figure mm -hmm. that who is that person? Mm -hmm. wh what is their phone number? Mm -hmm. And talk to them. If I'm going through a crisis right now, is that? Do you think I can call you when I'm dealing with this? Mm -hmm. And if they can say yes, fine. They say no, find somebody else and, and figure out what time. They can, it's okay for you to call them when you can call them. Maybe have two or three people that you can have. Uh, if, if you just have one, fine. And maybe that can be your pastor or whatever. If you feel like you can trust it, it's somebody that you can trust. You mm -hmm. find someone that you can trust and that you know that your um, confidentiality, they will keep it at for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a really good summary for the diasporans and mm -hmm. our brothers and sisters back home. To you, uh -huh. um, Auntie Mary, what's something... Like, what's the last word that you would give to those that are watching that are not necessarily part of our community, but they are service providers? How can they work with us, from your point of view, to encourage us to seek help a little bit more mm. from the professional setting? And not only that, when we do seek help, if we feel like we're not getting the services that we necessarily want and we don't show up, how do they try to meet us halfway and work with us as opposed to just looking that at that as, mm, you're not coming, you don't care necessarily about your health? I think that community building is a key. Okay. I think you, can, you cannot create services, mm -hmm. support, mm -hmm. that's going to meet my need if you don't know who I am. And incorporate me into that. Yes. yes. So I think the community building, I think we did a lot of that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is knowing who is you're trying to uh, provide resources to. Absolutely. Uh, and I think uh, we, we, we all went to school. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, we learn about different culture. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the culture has so much layer. And w when you talk about, uh, especially people from our part of the world, I'm from Tanzania. Right. I mean, they're like, uh, I don't know how many um, a tribe we have. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I don't even know how many we, we, we have. It again. We have so <laughs> I think we have 16, right? 16? Okay. No, we I have more than that. Okay. <laughs> over, over 50. <laughs> so within those tribes, mm. there's a different mm -hmm. culture, belief, value, tradition, mm. and da da da. So you, as other 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 therapists, other social, you cannot know all, all, of, all of it. Yeah. yeah. So if you really truly want to help me, and mm -hmm. you want to see me for who I am. Come talk to me first. Mm. Understand where I come from. Understand uh, all those layers. layers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, then go back in your office, try to create something that works that's for, me. for yeah. me. And I think we did that kind yeah. of work before. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to touch to what you said before about people back home. Mm -hmm. And and I think uh, there is a saying, I don't know if you heard this, it's like a black people, we don't have luxury to feel depressed. No, <laughs> we, that, 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 we don't have the luxury though. <laughs> that's kind of why people say, we, 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 we don't have the luxury to feel uh, depressed. If I get a penny for every time I hear that, I'll you, be just, you, just, you just get up and go. <laughs> that's, that's a luxury How that, dare you. that white people have. How, how dare you depressed? No, you're not allowed to. <laughs> so I think I think uh, uh, that's a miss too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I think also I mean our part of the world mm -hmm. is like when you are there's such a uh, uh, there's such a poverty in there. Yeah, we are such a so socioeconomical different from mm -hmm. this part of mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. and uh, we are probably constantly in a survival mode. Mm -hmm. uh, just the basic necessity: mm -hmm. food, shelter. You know, if Clothing. you are a social mm -hmm. worker, you know the Manslow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hierarchy, hierarchy. right? Yeah, the yeah. Hierarchy. I mean, you're, well, you're the, and most of the time we just spend time mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just really seeking this, the, the, the basic, basic necessity. Yeah. You don't have, I, I don't know if you have the, the awareness, the luxury, or the, the, luxury <laughs> or, the or the insight the to say, yeah. hey, 
I should check in with mm -hmm. my mental health. Mm -hmm. Maybe something going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's very true in this part of the world too. Mm -hmm. the, even though, like you say, we have services and people can access those services needed, but sometimes depending where you are in yeah. that social economic level. Yeah. I mean, there is such a huge correlation between homelessness and in poverty. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. uh, homelessness and, and mental, mental health. health. Mm -hmm. Such a huge correlation. Mm -hmm. And and that has a lot of to do with, you know, uh, people go through years with undiagnosed mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then kind of, as I say, it shows up in your life. In different uh, areas. It, it gets you stuck. Yeah. And you find yourself before... You find yourself in a in, in down right there, mm -hmm. where you know, and and a homeless might become an issue. Mm -hmm. So I, I, although we do have resources, but we have we don't have an equal access mm -hmm. to resources mm -hmm. and Equity. based on where you are. Right. So That's I mean, e equal access. I'm talking about whether you're talking about poverty, whether mm -hmm. you're talking about culture, whether mm -hmm. you're talking about all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, I'm very hopeful right now, like a uh, uh, government has such a huge focus mm -hmm. on homelessness, mm -hmm. on, on mental health, mm -hmm. and uh, often uh, the answer is not always in the just the housing people. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be a multifaceted yes. kind of approach yeah. where you have a, a housing, mental health. Mental health is a huge yeah. component. It is. And also, um, you know, addiction and all mm -hmm. that stuff. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're going to touch yeah. on that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so to bring it all together and to summarize, um, we have spent a lot of time talking about the diff some aspect of mental health, because mental health, I tell you, is a broad topic. We will be here all day and mm -hmm. all week if we really want to touch on all the different yeah. areas. But today we, we have narrowed it down to some of the things you should look out for to sort of like give you that insight that something is not right, that you're running out of gas, not in your vehicle. <laughs> 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 and that you should probably reach out to someone for help. What I do personally is I have what they call like the medicine wheel. Mm -hmm. I put the spiritual, the physical, the Emotional. mental, and the social, yeah. and I try to find a balance. Yeah. Yeah. If one area, if I'm not able to meet the physical need, like go for exercise, yoga, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, or if I'm not going to church and praying as much as I should, I feel that imbalance. imbalance and yeah. once I start feeling that way, I look to see which area I'm not giving attention to. Mm -hmm. And I try to balance that out. And for me, it works. If you have your sisters or your manhunt, your friends that are men that you want to talk to, reach out to someone. Talk to someone. It starts with you because you have to recognize it. Don't wait until other people around you start to recognize it. And if you are, if you are not able to recognize it, sometimes we have people around us who tend to know us a little better than mm -hmm. we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when people call you out and say, hey, I think something is off here, make time to listen instead yeah. of getting defensive. This is what we've talked about today. <laughs> Leave your input in the comments. I know there's a lot more to talk about, but we'll regroup again and pick up from, from where we left off. Until our next episode, Sabe Sandindin. The Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world.